Hey guys, I'm not officially back at 100%, but I did sleep for 24 hours and decided that uh, I have energy, so I'm going to use it. Plus it's like 7 a.m., so it's like, I already got one video done today, why not do another one? Uh, this one's a little more opinion-oriented, so again, take offense like everyone does these days and just hide in a corner later and realize that you've been sleeping under a rock for a while. So, this is all about content creation workflow on Linux. The good tools and the bad tools, all opinionated from me, of course. I have to say that. It's sad that you have to have trigger warnings in videos about software. Think about that. Think how pathetic that is. And then think that we let this happen. So, Linux content creation has gone from, you know, a 1 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. Because people have gotten apps like uh, Affinity Photo and an Affinity Designer completely working. Okay? Even though Photo crashed on my desktop. It's just, I don't know, it's being weird lately. I think I need to reinstall it. I don't know what's up. And it's very, very important to have content creation like recording, editing, photo editing, uh, photo manipulation, tons of things like that on every operating system, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Windows, you name it. Those are very important because it means people can do their work anywhere. So if you're the type of person that uses DaVinci's Resolve, you can do that on Mac OS, you can do that on Windows, you can do that on Linux and have the same exact effect on any OS. It's great. I love it. Now the software that we're going to be going over today is DaVinci's Resolve, Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, along with throwing in some mentions of software that just because they're fast doesn't mean they're good, you know? And hopefully we can come to a nice little conclusion in the end. So this is DaVinci's Resolve, and there's a lot of stuff in here to go over. It's not that big of a learning curve to go from Adobe to this, or Caden Live to this, or anything to this. It depends on what you end up knowing, and sorry about the jump scare. <laughs> I got one too. Because here's the thing, DaVinci's Resolve comes built in with eVines. And these keybinds can be adopted from Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, Apple Final Cut Pro 11, I guess, and Avid Media Compressor and Pro Tools. So either way, you end up keeping the same layout for your previous video editor in this one. And there's no better alternative on Linux than DaVinci's Resolve Studio. It is the fastest, it's the most optimized, and honestly, it's the most useful. Now, there are people that will tell you that it doesn't work on Debian. I have videos of it working on Debian. They'll tell you that it doesn't work on Fedora. I have it working on Fedora. I have it working on Arch Linux. I have it working on everything. That's just me, though. I know how to set it up. People that don't, don't want to learn how to fix their problems or what to do. It's simple. You install it. Okay, you remove outdated libraries and dependencies. Then you start up the application. It's a simple installation fixing process and it only takes about 30 seconds 30 seconds maybe less actually probably about 10 seconds you install it you enter a single command you're done yeah that's it now uh going over this is pretty easy i've kept the default stuff so if i wanted to i could go in here and we can zoom in and i can hit b for blade and there's the blade i can hit a to select and Oh, that's S. That's why it's not working. So A to select. And there's other tools here as well. So uh, there is T for edit mode, right? If you want it to, uh, we can do things. I don't even know what this tool does. I've never used it before. And then there's dynamic trim mode, which is W. I don't know what the hell that does either. Dynamic trim mode? What do you do? I don't know. I just use the normal tools. For one, so it's like blade, cut, 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 and just like remove what that needs to be removed, do what needs to be done. I'm a very simple video editing guy. I don't do any fancy long uh, takes and stuff and then just chop them up into little pieces. No, I use something that's called the pause button on OBS. Everybody loves the pause button. You gotta admit the pause button's pretty cool. Don't look at me like that. You like the pause button. 
All right, I'm done. I'm done. We're no longer in a horror movie. We're good. So using the pause button on OBS, again, ends up being a great tool for video editing because, well, when you screw up, you pause. You don't talk for a second and that ends up showing up in the video editor. You'll see that, you see these little stop points right here where there's no audio and you can cut from that point to the point where you want to continue again and continue onward and it ends up being very very good now in terms of what you can do mkv is supported in the studio version av1 is supported in the studio version it's even in the free version if you have nvidia you can render out an av1 and h well not h i don't think h265 that's that's a proprietary thing but uh having that ability in the free version now really does help but this is the studio version it's $300, well worth every cent, and you get a lifetime, you know, license to it. So you own the software, it is yours. So it's very nice to have. There's also other things that come with it, like an audio editor. So if you want to mix together your audio and cut it to pieces and do whatever, you can do that. If you right click your audio, you can go and add a bunch of stuff to it. Uh, if you need to, like effects and that, it's great. I don't, what does that do? Automated follow edit. Interesting. There's a bunch of tools here that I haven't used either. Like, look, I could select this entire area and start chopping it together. And I like that. That's pretty cool. There is color grading, which is what Hollywood loves most about DaVinci's Resolve, which is really cool. And yeah, color grading is kind of nice. Say, uh, Oh yeah, that's just the beginning of the video. I've only selected one selection. Let's go here. Let's do here. Okay, so this is the video I did earlier. And uh, if we want, we could totally crank up the brightness. All right, that's cool. We could just turn it all the way down or and crank up the gain so people can see it better. Look at that. Ooh, that looks pretty good. But then if we go back to this clip, this clip's not touched. The gain is not up. Everything is back to normal. Because you're editing by a clip-by-clip -clip basis. So you can change everything you want to change about each individual clip. It's great. But you got to do it a little bit better than that. Say so you are finally in the beginning of something. So we're right about here where I instantly switch over. That's the part where we want to boost the gain so that it looks better. Then there's Fusion. Fusion's pretty cool. Fusion allows you to change a lot of things. So you can add multiple different tools. There's so many tools here. Uh, Warp uses AI. It allows you to do slow motion on any video clip and have it look almost professional like slow motion. I haven't discovered how to do that yet. I'm just a dude. A dude that does not need slow motion. Yeah. Yeah. So you have specific needs. I'm here to edit. And you may think to yourself, why would you use a very expensive video editor to do such small amount of editing because it's about the workflow the better the more efficient your workflow is the better off you are and the more time you have to spend on other things so if you use a bad slow video editor like Caden live get over it it's not very good it's not modern it's not up to performance standards of professional video editors and it's never going to be that it is just wish.com's version of microsoft edit or whatever it's called what is it called microsoft video editor i don't know it's one of the really old ones from windows 98 that's what it reminds me of and you want your files to look good you want everything to work out to the best of its ability like when we go out here to deliver the video what happens is i select variable bitrate okay i, I record in constant and i select variable what that does at points when it slows down or the screen's not moving as much, it will lower the bitrate because it doesn't need to be that high. So the file size ends up being pretty small and it ends up uploading quicker, even though I don't really have that issue. But it ends up being very good and efficient. On to the next thing. So the next one is OBS itself. And uh, we're going to actually open up a brand new window for OBS. I'll launch it anyway. You're going to disable the preview. So here in settings, uh, this is what I normally use, uh, just for people to know. 
So on recording, I always always record an AV1. I'll always record an MKV. I'll always record a 25k bitrate, slowest, best quality, 60 FPS. I do that so you guys have the best visual experience when watching my videos. Audio will always be 320. I only have two tracks ever selected. And same thing for streaming. You get 18k bitrate. Basically 1440p looks 1440p. It's like it's on your own desktop. And this really helps things in the long run. It makes your videos look better. It gives it quality. So in the future, it's still going to look as good as the day you recorded it versus choosing H.264. You get a blocky mess. Uh, Twitch streamers who play Minecraft, you notice when they turn, it's blocky unless their bit rate's super high. If AV1, you can choose a 5K bit rate and it's going to look as good as a 10K or even 15K bit rate on H.264. Twitch needs to get their shit together because AV1 needs to happen a lot quicker for everyone. Okay? Needs to get out of beta. YouTube's been on it for years. Same thing for Kick, same thing for that failed experiment called Rumble. And it's just, you know, it's whatever. Now, I have two audio sources, okay? I usually add a third if I'm playing music in the background when streaming. And I can add that third one pretty quick. I didn't know that button existed. So I can do audio output capture, okay? And I can name this uh, music. And I can set this to another device. Currently, I have all other devices disabled. My HDMI and my onboard are off. But if I wanted to, I can set that to be onboard. And then I could use um, a mixer to send that signal coming from that application to the music. So that way, I don't hear it, but you guys hear it. And I can control it here. So I can, I can put it right below the video game audio. Actually, that's not it. The video game audio right here. That way you can hear the game audio, but the music's just right behind it. It's great. It ends up working very well. And then if I need it to, if ever I'm like recording something game wise, I turn off the track here. So that way it's on a separate track. So that way it's the game audio is right here. My mic audio is here and I can adjust both in post process. So I can turn the game volume up when I'm not speaking, turn it down when I am speaking. And it ends up being very cohesive and works very well. And then I have this. This is called my face cam settings for as a scene. So if I wanted to get serious and talk to you guys, I could click it and it works. And I would have to do some adjustments, but it, it just works. Okay. So there you go. That's OBS. Now I guess we move on to uh, this right here. This is Affinity Photo. And I'm not sure, but the designer's open. It looks like Affinity may have crashed. Yeah, it did. Okay, so the kernel's been doing some weird things with some stuff. It's not actually Wine's fault. And I believe the fact that it's still open is part of the problem. So if I go here somewhere, CL test is still open. Why are you still open? There's a lot of random junk that's currently open. It's probably preventing it from working. Because I was testing some stuff. Alright, so we got Affinity Designer and Photo both open. And I'm going to open up my thumbnail. We're going to maximize the screen. And of course, we're just going to set this to fit. Boom. So I normally have most things separated. So the outside here, the banner is separated. This is separated. Uh, the, uh, that, the background separated. Everything is separated into its own individual layers. And this is what Affinity Photo is used for. It's an alternative to Adobe Photoshop without paying every month. You buy once, there you go. Next version comes out, you get money off of that for owning the previous version and you continue that way. Currently we're on version 2. 2.5 to be exact and that means for all the way up to version 3 okay you're gonna have a free experience because you just bought it once it's currently on sale 50% off I think which is nice so if you want to go grab it go grab it and this is your alternative to Photoshop it can also do a lot of different things uh, let's take this for example so if we turn on you know what let's just not turn any of this off Give me a sec. Let me find a wallpaper that I have not modified yet. I need to. 
I think I'm going to go into the Maria Brink section and let's try this one. Ugh, no thank you. Not that one. Let's try this one. Nope. I'm not very, I, some of these were meant to be captured a little bit better. This one looks great. So what I can do is I can go to colors. I can auto level it. There we go. It brightens it up. I can go into uh, changing everything about it. So like the black point, we can reduce it. Exposure, we can increase it. Uh, the brightness, we don't need to actually mess with that. The contrast, and we can increase the clarity which in some circumstances is not good. Like we can increase this so her arms are just bloody as they can possibly be and they can just jack the vibrance, right? Normally I would put this through a cleanup process to get rid of the pixelation and stuff, but I don't want to. We want, we can make it warm, seem a bit Halloween-ish. We can make it like this, I guess, seem a little ghost-ish. We can change the overall tint like that, as you can see make it look really good or really weird i like it like this directly in the center shadow highlights like look at this we can just jack up everything in the image to just be like oh it's a light it's mystical it's coming from the ground this is all the cool stuff that you can do right because before it looked just like this it's just this is an application to want and to need for basically a good workflow jump in change the title add a background that means something or just keep this one i like this one this one looks good but in a nutshell this type of workflow and experience is really 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 good now we're going to move on to this application so we all know oh no it's going to crash isn't it it doesn't always like being moved so we all know that inkscape is a thing and Inkscape is great. It allows you to create vectorized type of solutions. So for me, I use vectors to create logos. This is my current logo. It looks great. I love it. It, it is a part of me in a way uh, because it defines certain aspects, as, <coughs> aspects of where my family came from and who I am right now. And I like it. It's colorful in all the right ways. It just works. I'm not sure I'm going to be keeping this part like it is, though. Like in this group section. Uh, where is it? There's a lettering going on in the middle. It's right here. I don't know if I want to make that gold. I really don't. Honestly, I think I might keep it white. Because I think that looks a little bit better. I've been fighting with this for a while to make this seem a little bit closer to me, you know? So this helps you create logos. This helps you create a whole bunch of stuff. So if you want to design shapes, you name it, this is your go-to. This is what I enjoy using. It's fast. It's efficient. It's easy to learn. Uh, you can do anything with shapes. I have a whole live stream on learning this program and how I came to create this logo. And it was a really fun, easy learning experience. Yeah. And then over time, I've learned more and more and perfected it more and more and more because, you know, you never stop learning. And if you do, you're doing a disservice to yourself. So, you know, with that, again, workflows are always different. And it depends on what you need to do. Now, programs like Caden Live, again, are not modern. They lack a lot of major professional like features. And they're not very fast. They're honestly, if I use that, it would slow down my workflow by probably 90%. If I switched my workflow to GIMP, there goes 90% of my workflow. If I switch my workflow to Krita, okay, it would be 10% of my workflow speed gone, but it just wouldn't look as good. I tend to put a lot in when I'm doing things quickly. So I record with OBS, I edit with Resolve, and then I make a thumbnail that suits the content that I made. No clickbait because clickbait is for idiots. And then I just make the thumbnail and I'm on the go. That's how that usually works. And what falls into my workflow can sometimes be Vert Manager or VMware Workstation. 
Sometimes we're just working in the terminal. Sometimes we're working in heroic. It just all flows. This is why I have a dock. And most people say to me, well, you have a lot of wasted space. Do I? Do I really? No, I don't. How you use your space, how do you utilize your space is part of your workflow, my workflow. Not your workflow, mine. You have to adapt your own. So if you want your top bar hidden, you can make your top bar hidden. You want to focus on things. If you want to open up a DaVinci's Resolve, have the top bar gone, have the bottom bar gone. Look at that. You got the full monitor to do your work. Because again, learn your desktop environment. You can customize the hell out of KDE. You can customize the hell out of GNOME. Both have the same amount of customizations. One uses widgets. One uses extensions. They're the exact same thing. Same, same, but different, but still same. That's for you kids that only understand English and memes. So when you think about it, it doesn't matter which desktop environment you use. As long as you utilize that desktop environment for your workflow, okay, actually learn your desktop environment. Actually put effort into learning your desktop environment to the point where you don't have a skill issue. That's how you make the best of your situation. That's why I use GNOME. In the end, I can customize GNOME to my 100% liking and have it not fail on me with like bugs after bugs after bugs. I don't have any. That's the thing. And that makes me happy. Same way that Microsoft Edge fits into my workflow. Believe it or not, Microsoft Edge helps me outline most of my videos. I basically write out what I'm going to do, what I'm going to record, how I'm going to record it. And it basically sections it in. Introduction. Uh, settings one. Uh, setting up your Linux environment. I don't need to do that. I've already done that. You guys have seen videos on that. Affinity Photo and Designer. Key features. Basic workflows. Demonstrating. OBS. Introduction. Setting it up. Configuring scenes. Yada, yada, yada. DaVinci's Resolve. And then I take that workflow and I just... I do it the way that I want to do it. And that ends up being the video that we have now. It's nice. It works for me. Anyway, uh, that's my workflow in a nutshell. And again, there are a lot of videos out there, video editors out there, but not literally 99% of them are not good. DaVinci's Resolve is king at the moment, and it will remain king for a very long time until someone else steps into this space. Can you imagine one day if Apple was like, Hmm, we need more money. Hey, I got an idea. Let's port. What is it called again? Final Cut Pro to Linux. Or if one day we just had the wine version of Apple on Apple apps on Linux. That is a thing, by the way. Or we have Hackintosh emulators. So in other words, emulators that run Mac OS inside of a window. It's a thing. It's currently being worked on. So either way, we're going to have more options here in the future. But as a native application, DaVinci's Resolve is the best. Affinity and Affinity Designer are the best. Adobe, uh, sorry, Adobe is crap. You can get Adobe Photoshop working, but it's not very good. They put too much AI crap into it and they ended up breaking it. Again, these are my opinions. Sad the world needs trigger warnings. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share this video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.